Boys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. We'll start with a quick refresh of primary key. Then we are going to learn how is data stored in DynamoDB under the hood. Then we are going to dive deep on partition key or hash key and sort key or range key. And we are going to know why are they named like this? What is the purpose behind them? And then we are going to learn how do you calculate number of partitions in a DynamoDB table? What is adaptive capacity and burst capacity? And finally, we'll take all these learnings in and go over how to choose the primary key and optimize your table. As always, timestamps are given in the description. Also, please let me know what you thought of this video. Or if you have any questions, put it down in the comment section. Uh, like and subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, it really makes me look like a better YouTuber than I am and it really, really helps the channel. All right, without further ado, let's jump into the video. All right, let's quickly look at what is DynamoDB primary key. So primary key uniquely identifies each item in DynamoDB table. There are two types of primary key. One is the simple primary key, uh, which is comprised of only one attribute and that attribute would be called partition key, also known as hash key. But if one attribute is not enough to uniquely identify the item in the DynamoDB table, then you can have composite primary key. And composite primary key is made of two attributes. One is the partition key and second is the sort key. Uh, so sort key is also known as range key. But let's take a quick example first. Uh, let's say this is an item in a table which stores maybe artist, song and all the other information. Uh, so in this case, the combination of artist and the song attribute uh, makes the item unique. So artist is the partition key and the song is the sort key. Okay, so now moving on to the advanced stuff. So data in DynamoDB is actually stored in uh, partitions. Uh, so let's say for this example, a DynamoDB table underneath has uh, three partitions. So you can think of partition as allocated storage for the table backed by solid state drives or SSDs. And uh, since DynamoDB is highly durable, Actually, under the hood, this one partition is replicated across three different availability zones. Okay, so now, how does DynamoDB determine which item go to which partition? So the way it works is, uh, let's say you try to insert an item, in this case, the, this item. DynamoDB will run a hash function on the partition key. So in this case, it will run that hash function on the attribute artist and it will determine based on the hash output which partition this item should go to. So similarly, as you insert more data, the DynamoDB will insert different items in different partitions. Note that they are not stored in partitions in order. I mean, what do I mean by that is uh, the partition two has for the artist queen, but partition three has Dua Lipa, uh, so they are not in like ascending order or anything because DynamoDB is not storing based on the value of the attribute. Uh, it is storing based on the output of the hash function, uh, which could be uh, randomized. And now let's look at partition three. Uh, so if multiple items have the same partition key, then DynamoDB will store all those items in the same partition, but the items will be stored in ascending order of the sort key, which is song in this case. So that's why uh, the partition key is named as partition key because it determines the partition. And it's also known as hash key because the hash function runs on this key. And similarly, uh, the sort key is named sort key because the items are sorted for the same partition key. And it's also called range key because partition key, you cannot give a range operator. When you query a DynamoDB item, you have to give equals. Uh, like you cannot give, hey, uh, give me items where artist is greater than Dua Lipa, less than uh, queen, you cannot do like that. You have to give, give me items where artist is equal to queen or equals to Dua Lipa. However, for the sort key, you could give greater than, less than, in between, all that stuff. You could say, uh, give me the items where the partition key uh, is queen, 
but the short key song is greater than uh, we will, right? Or, uh, or begins with we will. So that's why it's termed as a range key. Okay, so similarly, when you try to uh, read an item uh, from a DynamoDB table and you pass the partition key, DynamoDB will run the same hash function and determine the partition. It will go to the proper partition and then fetch the item back. So now the big question is, how do you determine how many number of partition in a DynamoDB table? So there is a formula. So this is a little hard to find, right? So here you go. So this is the formula for number of partitions. So RCU divided by 3000 and then we add WCU divided by thousands and then we round up. Uh, so for an example, if you allocate 15,000 read capacity unit to a DynamoDB table and 500 write capacity units uh, to the same table, uh, so the number of partitions that's allocated to this DynamoDB table in the beginning is one. But number of partitions can change down the line. So let's say this table became super busy and you increased the read capacity unit from 1500 to 2700 and write capacity units from 500 to 1000. So then the number of partitions will become two. And DynamoDB automatically will reshard all the data and send it to appropriate partitions. So by default, each partition will equally share the RCU and WCU. And then maximum size of each partition is 10 gigabyte. And maximum capacity for each partition can be 3000 RCU and 1000 WCU. And number of partitions can change with consumed storage increase because the size limit for each partition is 10 gigabyte. Uh, so if one partition has more data than that, then DynamoDB will add more partitions to it. And also like we discussed, if you increase or decrease the provisions capacity, DynamoDB will add or decrease uh, partition numbers. So in ideal uh, scenario, all the partitions should be equally busy, right? But in real world, it doesn't happen uh, because one partition could be way more busy than the other partitions. Uh, so we call that partition as a hot partition and the other partitions as cold partition. So what if one partition becomes so hot that your requests starts throttling? So how does DynamoDB handle that? Uh, so let's take a look at a feature which is called adaptive capacity. So let's say you provision the DynamoDB table with the write capacity unit of 400 and it has uh, four partitions. Don't get confused though that, hey Raj, you told me the formula, if you are only giving 400 WCU, it should not have this many partitions. Uh, remember, number of partitions depend on both read, read capacity unit and write capacity unit. So this table, you can allocate way more read capacity units and 400 WCU resulting in four different partitions. Uh, but anyway, let's say uh, you, you have these four partitions. Uh, so each partition gets 100 WCU because uh, the RCU and WCU is shared equally across all partitions. And then some traffic starts to come in and let's say each partition is consuming uh, 50 WCU. Uh, so total provision WCU is 400 and total consumed WCU is 200. So now one partition becomes busier than the other partitions. So in this case, if the traffic keeps going up for partition four, DynamoDB adaptive capacity will automatically and instantly increase throughput capacity for these partitions. So in this case, partition four is consuming 150 WCUs and DynamoDB will allocate 150 WCU. The reason it can do that is because there is some spare WCU from the other partitions because partition one, two, and three is only using 50 WCU each. So this extra capacity beyond the initial provision WCU is called adaptive capacity. This works for both read and write. I'm just showing for WCU. But there are a couple of limitations for this adaptive capacity. Uh, adaptive capacity 
cannot go beyond provision capacity of the table. And also note that a max consume capacity for each partition is 3000 WCU and 1000 RCU. So adaptive capacity cannot go beyond those limits. Now beyond this pattern, uh, there could be another challenge. Remember, RCU and WCU provisions capacity based on read and write per second. But what if the traffic in the table exceeds that rate? So I'm not talking about exceeding the total uh, WCU. What I'm talking about is, let's say a table uh, has 100 WCU, so that enables you to write certain uh, size of items per second. But what if the amount of data that's coming in per second is higher than that rate? So RCU and WCU cannot accommodate that, right? Because DynamoDB takes a little bit of time uh, to give you the allocated RCU and WCU. So in those cases, what DynamoDB does is uh, it retains up to five minutes of unused read and write capacity. And during an occasional burst of read or write activity, these extra capacity units can be consumed quickly. Uh, even faster than the per second provision throughput capacity that you have defined for your table. Uh, so note that adaptive capacity increases uh, the provisioned capacity for that partition beyond what was allocated before, but burst capacity doesn't do that, but burst capacity lets you handle spiky traffic uh, by giving you idle um, RCU and WCUs. And this bus capacity is also consumed for background maintenance and other tasks. All right, so now that we understand how a primary key helps uh, data goes into different partitions, how sort key works, so how will you choose uh, the primary key? So choose a partition key with large number of distinct values. Uh, so what this will do is it, it will uniformly distribute all of your table's items across all the partitions. Uh, so the traffic will split across all those partitions rather than coming into one partition. Now to enforce this, uh, you can also use calculated suffixes. Uh, so this is like a fancy, fancy word, right? So I'm pretty sure you guys and girls uh, did not get this part. Uh, so what do I mean? So let's say we have this Dynamo table where date is the partition key and the order ID is sort key. And now it could happen that a particular date, so in this case, January 10th, 2020, has way more items than the other dates. So to enforce uniqueness, what you could do is, so to enforce uniqueness, what you could do is, before writing the items into the table, you calculate a hash suffix based on the order ID. Uh, so you, you grab the order ID and you run your own hash algorithm. There are a lot of hash functions available that you can use in your code and then append the hash suffix to the partition key. So in this case, we are running a hash a function in our code for let's say the first order ID 25623 and that maybe gave you 17 and you concatenate that to the end of the date. And then you store that as the partition key in the date field. Uh, so this will enforce uniform distribution of data across partitions. And again, please don't get confused. This is an example. Uh, so in this case, order ID will be a better partition key. Uh, but I'm just showing an example how you can use this calculated suffixes to introduce uniqueness to your partition key. All right, going back to how to choose the primary key. So sort key helps efficient querying using range operator, right? Range operator as in greater than, less than, between, begins with, all that stuff. So use composite sort key when appropriate. So the function of sort key is uh, it will sort the items in the same partition with the same partition key. So if you need to grab those items, it is easier because all of them are right next to each other. So choose sort key accordingly. And even for sort key, you can use composite uh, sort key when appropriate. Uh, so let me show you what is what do I mean by composite sort key. 
Uh, it is very similar to the calculated suffixes. So let's say you have a table where customer is the partition key, order ID is the sort key, and then you have item price, and then you have other attributes. So let's say you have a bunch of query uh, where you want to do range-based selection on item price. So not only you need to do greater than some order ID, but you also want to do uh, greater than this order ID and maybe greater than $10 or something, right? But item price is not part of the sort key, so you won't be able to do that. Uh, so you can do that using a filter expression or scan, uh, which we don't want to do because it doesn't save you any RCU, WCU, because filter expressions are applied after uh, the query runs and it just discards some items. So what you want to do is, uh, before writing to the table, concatenate item price to the order ID. So you can see I have concatenated uh, 20 for the first item to the end of order ID. So now in your uh, query, you can use the range on the item price as well. You can say, hey, greater than, you can give the value of the order ID and the price and it will fetch accordingly. Uh, so this is a, this is a nifty uh, technique but there are trade-offs, you have to do all this in your code, uh, extra maintenance, all that stuff. So moving on, so there is no CloudWatch metric available for Dynamo partitions. You cannot see uh, how many partitions are there, even though you can calculate, but it doesn't show the performance for each partitions. However, your application code can print out partition key for throttling errors, and then you could introduce uh, other measures like this uniqueness and all that stuff. Also use other techniques to reduce consumed uh, RCU and WCU. So if you bring all attributes from your table, which you are not using, you actually burn uh, RCU. So use projected expression to bring only the required attributes that saves you capacity units. Use LSI, GSI, avoid scan, use DAX or DynamoDB Accelerator, Use eventual consistency where possible because eventual consistency uh, consumes less, capa less capacity units than strongly consistency. And use asynchronous design, etc. But and keep in mind the trade-offs. For example, DAX, you do have to pay extra. Like GSIs, you have to allocate extra provision capacity to the GSI. Uh, but LSI, you cannot delete after you create. So all that stuff. All right, so keep all this in mind. I personally keep all this in a cheat sheet and whenever I have to dive deep in a DynamoDB application, uh, I validate all of this before designing the primary key. All right, if you like the video, please click the like button, smash it if that's something you are into. Uh, subscribe and again, please comment. Uh, it really helps this channel grow. Also, I have created a Facebook page where I share upcoming videos, uh, behind the scenes pictures and occasionally picture of my dog um, all right that's the video guys and girls hopefully you guys and girls enjoyed it i'll see you in the next lecture bye